Okay. It's mainly for me to remember anyway. So, so you said you're from Sas... S where is it? <laughs> Cumberland House, Saskatchewan. How far is that from here? It's about... Do you know where the paw is? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, between the paw and Finn Blonde, about halfway, 40, 40 miles over the Saskatchewan border is Cumberland House. And what brought you here? Like because my ancestors started out here. Oh, they did? Mackenzie. Macaulay started out in the York factory. Your, um, your ancestry is a Mackenzie? Isn't that a Scottish name? Yeah. I'm now a Macaulay. Are my my mum's a Mackenzie, I'm a Macaulay. So you're Scottish? They're Scottish half-breeds. They both married Cree Indian women. They're Métis. So you're half, you're half Scottish and half, oh my half gosh. Half Cree. That's amazing. Yeah, so it's, uh, we're Scottish half-breeds from yeah. Cumberland House. My That's the first in, in, uh, inland trading post of the Hudson Bay Company. Huh. That's how Mackenzie ended up there. So you know my ex-husband, he was half Mackenzie. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it threw me. I'm like, I know that name, Mackenzie. That's an old Scottish name. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, they, so they built the first inland post in Cumberland House. That's where I was born. And I came up here when I was 14 to find a husband. I know John. You came up here to find a husband. Yeah, and you can't laugh about it because this is a small community of 400 people, and um, so the pickings of, for men us, were up here. Well, most of us were related, and we weren't allowed to marry up to third cousin, and they were the only cute ones left in town. <laughs> so I had to leave home, find a job, and find a husband because that's all girls are geared to do. And how old were Just you? Get married and have a family. I was 14 and I got off the train here. By yourself? My sister was here already. Same thing drew her here is because our, uh, the Mackenzies started out here. Our uh, great grandfather had a trap line mm -hmm. and his uh, little caboose was uh, way up on the end of the hill there beside Cape Mary and we found remnants of the foundation of his, his little shack that he had up there. Mm -hmm. It was the part of the, the end of his trap line. So how long did it take you to find a husband after you moved here? <laughs> too, too quick, actually. Well, I married 10 days before I turned 18. Okay. Still had to get permission. But uh, I tried to get rid of him, but he's been hanging in there now for over 53 years. So you've been married to the same man yeah. since you were 17 years old? That's, that's, yeah. That's wonderful. That's over 53 years ago, June the 6th. Yeah. And how many kids? Five. Uh huh. And are any of them artists like you? Uh, they all have their talents with different, different things. Um, one is quite uh, very talented. And the rest have their own little specialties. They and how long have you been doing your art? Since 1983, maybe. Yeah, so I taught the, the tough thing. I taught myself how to do the tough thing. And then I taught over 60 other people to do it. So is and tough so thing just rare? Is that? It was rare when I, when I found out about it. I had to teach myself how to do it. Mm -hmm. Perfect it, create new designs, and even the provincial flowers I, I did. And then I taught over 60 people, and then now they in turn are teaching other people. That's so it's really not going to die out. That's really great. See what is happening, even the family patterns, the traditional family patterns are forgotten. Mm -hmm. So I brought them back and I taught the, you know people how to do them. But where, where was tufting originally? Um, this is from the north? Actually, it was. Um, a nun, the, a Scottish nun, that taught a Métis woman, and she taught that whole tribe of Slavey Indians, they call them the Slaveys, and uh, how to do it, you know, to decorate their clothing and their footwear and stuff. And um, So is this sort of far back as turn of the century? Oh or? yeah. And uh, so with that, uh, well, after I, t I taught myself how to do it, then I got uh, all that going, and so did I get the family patterns before they were all forgotten. 
You're talking about the, the, the Celts and the... There's all kinds of different things like the beaded, beaded family patterns. Ours is like 12 generations already. And we've been using the same family pattern. So now pretty much all these patterns are back. All the art forms that were dying out, the quill work and all this stuff, that's, they're all back and healthy again. At one time, the tufting was so rare that only museums could afford them. Really? Yeah. We're talking about in the 80s when yeah. you started. Yeah, but what so got you interested in it? I mean, was it something... It's just something that it's in my genes. My mother and my grandmother mm -hmm. were very uh, dedicated to keeping culture and, and the language alive. Mm -hmm. So I, I just did the same thing that they would have done. So I feel like I contributed a little bit. Yeah, no, But with absolutely. that... I uh, saved all the scraps. When you when I was doing the tufting, um, you only use the hair. You cut the hair off the hide to make these uh, designs. And you used and caribou then, hair. Yeah, and uh, I saved all the pieces of scraps. And I had three bags for the really big bags for the scooping in the shed. I was thinking at some point in time I'll think of a way to use it. Mm -hmm. And then I had a dream about it. I saw animals, birds, and people jumping out of those bags. And there was jumping, a message. Jumping out of the bags? Yeah. And I knew there was a message there for me, so eventually I figured it out. It was a gift, really. Mm -hmm. but probably from for trying so hard to keep the culture alive. Mm. So that's why I started doing my school terrible hair sculptures. Now, is your work available anywhere outside of Churchill? No, it used to be uh, Northern Images in Edmonton, West Edmonton Mall used to carry them, but they closed down. They couldn't afford the rent there anymore. Mm. And there used to be one in the Winnipeg too, and uh, they don't uh, buy them anymore. I, every time I went to Edmonton to visit my younger mm -hmm. children, <coughs> I would take a whole bunch of them with me. And so your young your younger kids are in Edmonton. Yeah, well, they're not really young, but they're all yeah. great. We're getting old now. <laughs> my middle child just turned forty eight, so they're not kids. So. <laughs> anyway, so I don't know. I'm in my forties. Be careful there. I still <laughs> want to be a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll always be kids in a mother's eyes because they still worry you. You know, there's always something. You think, you think, oh, okay, my job's done, they're out the door, you know, they moved away. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a the grandkids and great grandkids. <laughs> We're expecting our se second great grandchild in November. So. so you do a lot of storytelling in the town, I've been told. Yeah, I do a lot of talks with the groups, tour groups. I've got, I think I've got 44 lined up for the rare season. And they're an hour and a half talks, and I have to squeeze a lot of things in because the culture is a multitude of aspects. Like, you wanna see, I, I called my talks Tales of a Trapper's Daughter to start with, but it turns out that according to the guides, it's more like a mini lesson in Metis culture and history. So, basically, that's what I try to do. And there's different aspects to a culture that's the clothes we wear, the, mm -hmm. you know, the dress that we prefer, which made more sense at the time because the native dress was more to this country, you mm -hmm. know, this country, the furs and whatever. And uh, then the music we prefer, we're uh, not uh, necessarily, I guess Métis is a good word that the government gave us. It's a, a French word meaning mixture of European and Indian ancestry because we have, uh, you know, little uh, things that we adopt from both sides. Some of them, of course, more practical, the native side, and then the Scottish side. Of course, we weren't allowed to brag. That's a no-no in the native culture. And so that's a hard thing. So, so was a lot of the mixture with Scottish or just Anglo? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of, in our area, were uh, Scottish mostly mm -hmm. Scottish ancestors, but in uh, the Red River area it was mostly French and 
different native culture. Which is where I came from today, the Red River area. Yeah. So, you know, I try to include that. And then the, the how we survived off the land, you know, how we had to preserve and prepare food that comes only for different seasons. And we had to make them stretch for a whole year until the trapping season in the spring, in March. And then... So you had a lot of fish in summer, I would imagine? And yeah, my d uh, dad was a sturgeon fisherman and of course a trapper. And my mother did a lot of beadwork and quilting and things like that. And she was very creative in uh, creating different food uh, that sort of never occurred to other people to, you know, add little dimensions into their food to make it more pleasant and mm -hmm. to look at and also taste wise. So she so, was the equivalent of a, a culinary chef of uh, yeah, exactly. uh, the time. She could do so, like I'm, I tend to be like that. If I have nothing, what, what little I do have, I can make a concoction and, <laughs> and actually fool people, you know. But you have to be brave enough to do these things. Well, and I think you have to have the gift that our grandmothers give yeah, us to pass so, along. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That really comes, I yeah. think that that comes through generations. Yeah. So the music, like, uh, uh, I love the drum because I had a, I, had a, um, a gra a, I was granted a song of my own. Uh, it's, it wasn't likely because of uh, being a half-breed mm -hmm. um, because they're, these songs that come from the soul are not really taught. Um, they, uh, they speak to people when you sing it. And it was a very, uh, it's a very short song and so... Are you going to sing it for me? <laughs> <laughs> no. And uh, like at, <clears throat> at first I thought, wow, you know, I felt honored that you know, I heard this song in my sleep, and I tried it, and I did it. And then uh, two seconds later, because we have this conflict, I'm still part Scottish, you know, right away I felt like I was cheated. You know, I've been gypped here. Why? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? I've got the shortest song in the world, you know? And then I so saw in order to pacify myself and don't feel so bad, I rationalized that, well, hey, maybe I only got half a song because I'm only a half breed. Ah. So then, but this stage of Opposed my life, to a double breed? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, it, it's so, uh, at my age, I, that's about as long a song as I can sing now. You know? Do you sing in some of, locally around? Oh, the church. You know, that's a safe place to go. Yeah. To sing your heart out, church. Yeah, yeah you go to church because we're, we're, you know, we're all trained to be nice, and you can't kick people out or tell them to <laughs> shut up. So you know, you can just beller it all out. There is karaoke night though here. I heard. <laughs> yeah, they, it's tonight, I think, and I'm gonna miss it. But yeah, I heard karaoke was where tonight. Somewhere my, in the social club. Well, my husband and his friend uh, are playing at the Legion tonight at nine o'clock. I'm sorry I will miss that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all country and western. All good stuff. Do they do country and western dancing here too? Uh, not so much, you know. People like to sit back, have a beer and listen. So. Mm -hmm. And what's the, is there, how many churches are in town? Three. And what church do you go to? The Catholic Church. Okay. And then there's, is there a Protestant? Yeah, Anglican Church and the Lions Church. Okay, I think I saw the Anglican church on the corner when you go towards the ocean. Yeah, that's a really old church. Uh -huh. And uh, it was, it's, well, I'm curious because I just came back from Churchill North. Uh, do you ever have an encounter with a polar bear here? <laughs> oh, more than I can tell you. It's horrible, <laughs> especially when my kids were little. You know, it was just the uh, polar bear season to me was just like horror. I, like I was standing hard all night. Uh, you know, I never got no sleep for about a month and a half. You were worried they were going to come through the well windows? Well, they have come so close. There was one sitting on the, on the snowbank right outside my bedroom window, way up on the snowbank. <laughs> and my, my uh, oldest daughter was just a little girl then. She was standing there and she was all excited, you know. She thought it was a puppy. Right. <laughs> and she's all excited, you know, big smile. And I looked. 
And then I went closer and I saw, I looked up on the floor like and there's poor bear just sitting there. He could have just slid right down into the bedroom. So I grabbed her, I just sort of, I didn't want to scare her, so I grabbed her from behind like this, by the back over the bedroom, I slammed the door. Yeah, and polar I waited, bears love babies. I waited for that, that, that bear to slide right down the snowbank, but he didn't. And there's another time where I, uh, I went to let the dog out, he needed to get out, he's barking now. But he was really barking, like I thought, maybe <laughs> this is, he really needs to go, you mm -hmm. know. So I get up and go half asleep, and so I opened the door and he away he went. And he kept on barking and barking outside. So I peeked out the side the, the door and I went through the window. And uh, oh my God, there was a big polar bear sitting right at the bottom of our steps, mm. three steps down. And I just freaked out. Mm. And I, I said, Bobby, Bobby, I'm trying not to yell. Mm -hmm. What time of day was it? Early in the morning. Yeah. In the door, we had an Irish setter. Mm. And uh, he was a dumb dog. <laughs> he lived to be almost 18 years old. He used to run uh, every mile I, I drove in my cab. I owned a cab for five years. Hey? We're okay. taping actually. <laughs> Is that my mom? That must be your daughter. <laughs> yeah, that's my daughter. The only one that came back. She's like, what are you doing over there with my mother? Oh, we, you know, have this camera set up on about 25 you know, menus. Bobby spoke me saying, I wonder what Myrtle's doing. She's supposed to be taking me to Legion to take my guitars and stuff. In She's there. talking to an American girl about polar bears. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so finally he got, he gets up and he's pulling up his pants. He's doing up his belt. I said, never mind that. I said, there's a bear on the side. And so he looks at the other side of the window, uh, the door, peeks out at there, and he turns on and look at me, it's as white as a ghost, and he said, Myrtle, there's a bear out there. <laughs> and you know, like I said, what the hell do you think I was trying to tell you? Yeah. <laughs> but here's my great white hunter, eh? Yeah. He hasn't got a clue. We, ne we never kept a gun in the house for one thing. Not even one of those sound makers. But anyway, so we kept peeking, and this dog kept running around the bear, around and around in circles, his tail wagging and everything, you know, like playing with it. And then then the bear would follow him like this every time he'd go around, and then he went the other way. He started going the other way, and this bear... Was it a baby bear, or was it no, a pretty a big, big, one, big yeah. bear? And uh, I guess the bear just got fed up. He just stood right up, and he kind of looked at the dog like, you know, like you're crazy dog. <laughs> and he just walked away down the street, right down the middle of the street. My understanding is that they're they're not aggressive unless really provoked. And, exactly. You know, they uh, eat seals. You know, <laughs> and, and if you you if you ever know of course you're not from here. But you'll notice in Churchill when we're walking anywhere, uh, especially in uh polar bear season, up uh, the Churchillian will never walk around a corner of a building. Not just right around the corner. Just in case they, there's they one. They always take a wide turn, just in case there's a bear on the other side. Because it's it's when you uh, surprise them that they'll react. Eh? Hmm. I didn't even think about that, yeah. Like right on the square here, my husband, when he was young, he was going through the square and it was a, uh, a white out a storm could hardly see you like uh, three feet in front of you. Uh huh. And right when you got to about halfway, this white thing came out of the snowstorm and walked right in front of him. Hmm. And he froze. He could not move. He said he couldn't move a muscle. So the bear just he kept panicked. walking. Yeah. Yeah, so but that's the right thing to do. You don't, you don't make any sudden movements and if you do, Meet up with the bear and you back off, back off very slowly and keep your eyes on it. So you do keep eye contact? Yeah. yeah. But if he makes that woofing sound, <sighs> that means he's about to attack. We had that. We had a couple make that sound when we were up yeah, north this week. Yeah, that's a threat. 
I think one was because they were they were not mating, but they were flirting and they had just yeah. met. And well, I they think, were just excited. Maybe. Oh yeah, well, they were a little excited, but I think she was a little pissed off that we interrupted her mating game. <laughs> she was not happy, okay. and the boy, with the guy, was just you know the male was just lying there with his legs flat up, and he okay. was fine. She was the one who was mad. <laughs> you interrupted my flow. <laughs> anyway, I really got. Got to go. Okay. Well, uh, no, I really appreciate your time, Myrtle. And um, oh, this has been lovely. Have, uh, so you, your work is over at the post office. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to take a look at yeah, that. Yeah, they're so. uh, trading cards in the post office. My showcase. That's where I keep some of my stuff. But I do all my talks and heritage hall. Which is right across the street, right? Uh, no, it's right behind the Northern Shore. Okay.